What happened? Nope. What happened? Nope. I got touched. the places, famous or otherwise, Rise Up Paranormal has investigated, the Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts was never one of them. It was never by design, but when they were asked to check it out themselves, Ken DaCosta and his team were happy to finally investigate this historic and allegedly haunted home. We've really never had the opportunity. We've talked to Leanne so many times and we're gonna come and we're gonna set things up, but uh, we managed to hit the date just right tonight. So very, very small crew with the run of the place. This is gonna be, this is gonna be really cool tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Rise Up came in with a smaller crew than normal. Team leader, Ken DaCosta, historian and investigator, Chris Blanchett, and tech specialist and investigator, Cody Ray Desbians. Now, I'm not sure if it's just the way this room is shaped, but I'm not digging this area right here. And I feel like there's somebody here. Like I said, I was feeling a child, almost gonna be like, hey, Same feeling. come play with us. <laughs> like, all I could think of was the shining. Come oh, play with thanks. Us, Danny. That's all I could think of with the twins. Come play with us, Can't you say, like, some cute kid that's uh, not gonna be creepy? No, no, it's definitely like shining creepy. Style. It's, it's definitely creepy. Can you open that closet door? Go for it. If a kid jumps out at me, Dan, there's a ladder. Yeah, let's close that. Did you feel anything when I yep, opened it? close it. I hope it. <laughs> close the door! <laughs> Why did you say close the door? The first thing that I saw was a little boy. It's almost like playing hide and go seek, and I saw a little boy come running out. So I, that's why I said, okay, let's just close the door and leave it be. If he wants to go back in, that's fine. Interesting. Well, I'll definitely have to focus over here because I, I feel unsettled. Yeah. I don't say that much. Spirit medium Tiffany Rice joined this small group in order to help Rise Up decide which rooms they would want to spend the most time in. This walkthrough made it easier for Tiffany to determine where the energy was as it can change from night to night. There would be no IR cameras set up or a home base. Ken, Chris, and Cody would just spend time in the house with digital recorders and their own senses. They would, however, add one new experiment to the investigation. What we have here is a flashlight with you know, solid 100% brand new batteries pointing in a light beam across to this light meter here. And what we'll do is get a baseline reading, and I think Cody said it was around 18 lux before. And just basically, if something crosses the beam, immediately we'll have a drop in um, the amount of light that's being picked up by the sensor. As the program took a reading every second looking for significant drops, Rise Up went to work. We wanted to come up tonight, spend some time here. I'm sure you're well aware that we're in the house trying to reach out to you. I just heard something. Was that downstairs? Possibly. My cardio anyway at yeah. 2 30. Not quite a scream, but I know that there are a lot of people who have come in here, literally thousands, that do the very same thing that we're doing right now to just kind of reach out to anybody who might be in this home. 
We're well aware of the situation here, we're well aware of the history here. But nonetheless, we still want to try to reach out to you to see if you have a message or there's something that you'd like to say to us. Could I ask if anyone associated with the Borden family is here tonight that you could just let us know? How about any children? There are any children up here. We brought some new toys that you can play with. We have a little, little ball over here, another bigger ball, and then we have a little dog that's in the other room down the hall here. If there are any children here, we want you to know that you're safe with us. We're not here to be confrontational at all. I have no idea. It's gone now. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Maybe seven or eight times. Yeah. All right, let me mock the audio. I definitely heard it. Okay. It almost sounded like footsteps to me. Heavy footsteps. That same kind of pattern. Maybe you're in the other room down the hall. That's okay. If you don't want to come and talk to us in this room, you can stay over there. We'll give you your space. Just would like some sort of acknowledgement, whether it's a noise, just to let us know where you are, so we're we're not talking to nobody here. If you have a presence in this house, and you're willing to speak to us, we'd appreciate that. Mark audio. Yes. Yeah, I heard it. What did you hear? Like a... Yep. When Ken and Cody headed back downstairs, they found out that they weren't the only ones that heard footsteps. I don't know, five minutes ago? Not yeah. even? We thought you were coming down these stairs. Yeah. It was like people in this bedroom. Were you over on that side? Well, like we, were, we, were, we were eventually, floor. maybe for the last 15 minutes or so, we were in the floor. But on the third floor. Yeah, Can no, this was like... to the third floor and... Walk down. No, we weren't on the second floor. We were on the third floor, and then just it came sounded like. Back but I'm going, yeah, it sounded there. like it was. It was close because I went upstairs. Like you guys were nowhere up there, and it sounded like people were. No, we went in all the way up, stayed up there. there, and then just came down real quick. We wouldn't have. I mean, if you had, you would have been like. Yeah, it sounded like a bunch of you guys walking feet. down. I thought the, like you guys yeah. were gonna come. And when we were up there, when we were when we were marking, rhythmic boom boom boom. Boom. Yeah, I wonder if that was it. I mean, that's like, if we could, if we heard the same thing, thing, but from up away. on top, and we heard it from. I don't. It was weird because right? I, I was looking at Tim and it's like, oh, it's just them, and then a few minutes in, I'm like, was it them? <laughs> right. No. And I went up there, so, and you guys weren't there. But I re we recorded something. The next session had all four investigators checking out the basement. What we'd like to ask is if there's a presence here with us, we want to speak to somebody who's not afraid to come forward. I don't know if you're intimidated in any way. I don't see why you would be or frightened of the questions that we're asking, but I'm looking for someone who has no fear to come forward. If you're here, for whatever reason, in this space, to just acknowledge us and let yourself be known. Cody, right here. He puts this little ball on the ground. It's, a, it's, it's simple, you just have to move, it lights up. It really just lets us know that you're here. That's it. That's, that's simple. all we want you to do. It's said that there's a presence here. Yeah. That's been documented many times by people. We're just curious to know whether or not you'd like to show yourself to us. Anything you want to say?
We just want to have a few minutes with you if we could. We would really appreciate it. We'd be honored. Who are you? Just very simply and to the point. I also just heard the name Emily. Oh, Mark Audio. Female. Ma'am, I'm, I'm not sure of your name. I, I wish I knew your name. I really do, because I, I really want to know you and meet you and experience you and try to figure out why you're down here. I just heard her say, don't call me ma'am, but that's in my, my mind, not. Okay. Madam? Mrs. Miss? Uh, help me, please, please, somehow. How can you help me? Could you yell your name as loud as you can? Even if you think I won't hear it, just try. Just yell really loud. If you're uncomfortable with us being here for some reason, just let us know. Give us some sort of sign. Did you do that? No. Okay. Did somebody just light the dog up too? No. Okay. Where is he? So the ball and the dog just went off. Right, we have some kind of line of communication. Oh, yeah. Cation. Ball just went off Ball's again. Seven seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds, nothing since then. Just trying to determine if there's like a pulse yeah. or something down here. This is all pretty random. Okay. Do you want us to go? How can you let us know that this is your space? It's time for, for us to go. We'll, we'll leave. Just have to let us know. You know just, just let us know. Because I don't want to leave without meeting you. And if meeting you is you telling us to go, well, then I'm, I'm happy. I, I got to meet you. So the ball, the dog, push me a little bit, yell your name. Mark Audio. Just heard something. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it. After that session, Rise Up congregated in the dining room to listen to their recorders. Ken found something almost immediately. Is there another one? The f was that? <laughs> Do they bleep that? <laughs> You can hear it from here. <laughs> yeah, take the headphones out, see how loud that is. You could probably hear it without the headphones, because I could hear it. Let me rewind it. Yeah, go to the 
2515. It's like around 2520. <laughs> Mark Audio. <laughs> It's something like. <laughs> Did it say something about like room. going through? <laughs> the room. Something with oom in it. Oh, let me go back further. The rest of the night was relatively quiet for Rise Up. Overall, the group enjoyed their first time investigating the Lizzie Borden house. We came in thinking, you know, Lizzie Borden house, a lot of hype, a lot of investigations, and a lot of people, you know, evidence up, the, you know, there's evidence everywhere. And we're like, let's just slow down. Let's take it as just a normal investigation, see what's going to happen. And sure enough, we come in and we're getting some weird stuff. Um, I'm excited to see it on the computer with the speakers and on the big screen. Myself and Ken are upstairs uh, near Bridget's bedroom. Uh, I automatically start hearing footsteps in my headphones listening real time. Ken obviously heard them, we all heard them. Um, it sounded like it was coming from the hallway approaching the room. It was faint. Uh, that's what I, that was my first impression that somebody was coming down the hallway. Looking back now after talking to Chris and Tiffany who were down here saying that they heard footsteps on the second floor and Chris actually went up to check. It sounds like uh, I could have been recording footsteps that were on the second floor after listening back, which makes sense. It was around the same time after, you know, adding up the time, starting our session around 8 o'clock and then, then them hearing their footsteps around 8.15, 8.20. After going through their recorders from that night, Rise Up found some interesting EVPs and other sounds. I also just heard the name Emily. Oh, Mark Audio. Female. Not over here. Yeah, I didn't hear it here. We didn't hear it over here. This voice was heard in the basement. Tiffany asked about Emily being there. And then you hear a female voice saying, this is. The rest couldn't be made out. Does anyone here need some assistance? Do you need some help? Up in Bridget's room, you can hear a female voice before Ken speaks. Ken hears Bridget and thinks it is coming from another room. Was this Bridget's room? I just heard something. Again, in Bridget's room, Ken asks a question, and then you hear a male voice say, I see you. We're not here to be confrontational at all. What's the thump? Yeah, I hear it. I have no idea. It's gone now. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Maybe seven or eight times. Yeah. All right, let me mock the audio. I definitely heard it. Okay. You heard these earlier, and they were as clear as day. Both Ken and Cody heard them in the moment. If anyone here in this space carries that emotion with you, is it anger, is it rage, disappointment? Mark that. Did you just hear something? I heard a whisper. Anybody whisper? No. All right. I heard it. it here. I heard it. It was right here. This was heard in the basement. Rise Up heard so William. It's always cool when you hear something in the moment and then can back it up on the equipment later on. You can't get all that and not go back for seconds. Ken brought back with him Chris and Cody. He added Vin Pacheco and Rise Up newcomer Ali DaCosta. Ken is my uncle. 
I have empathic abilities which allows me to connect to the spirit world. So my feeling in here is like, I feel like I know like I'm being attacked and like I'm about to be. So I'm anxious, my chest hurts, my head hurts. I definitely feel like I'm being watched in here. You feel like it got colder when you walked in? Yeah. Well, we, as soon as I walked past that room over there, which I don't know whose room that one was. That was Lizzie's room. Well, the one in the corner right there. This wouldn't have been a room. This would have been the. Uh, Kind of their powder room or where they oh, had their okay. clothes and dressing, like a dressing room. And half his office. And half his office, right? Yes. Just like he had done previously with Tiffany, Chris took Allie for a walkthrough. A little nauseous being up here, too. Nope. What happened? Nope. What happened? Nope. Touched. Nope. Ah, is there anyone in here that want to speak to us? This wouldn't be the first time we're here. Where'd you get touched? And like on my shoulder, like back here inside the just a light powder touch, room. Right? Yeah, just like a very like Could you step away kind from of. Bed? But I felt it, and it's weird. So. I think the antenna was off. What happened here? Was it going off? It was going off, but I think the antenna was just all the way up, and that one's kind of touchy because it. See if it goes off again. So on just a walkthrough, Allie got touched and the REM pods started going off down the hall. Rise Up was hoping that this was a harbinger of things to come. How about in here? Is there anyone in here with us? Whether it's the Borden family or any of the families that have since lived in this location? I think you're trying to get yourself known. Perhaps yell your name, just once, just as loud as you can, even if you think we can't hear it. Do you want me off the bed? You gotta give me some kind of communication. This is Andrew. Did like to have all the doors locked. Keep everyone out of here. What do you think about people coming in here now? I don't think Lizzie's here. I mean, maybe if you are, I don't know. Lizzie, if you're here, I mean, feel free to say hi. I don't, I don't think you would be here. Such a horrific scene for you to go through. I don't know why you'd come back. Who is here, though? Come on, we know you're here. We caught your voices last time we were here. We heard you walking around. Sue, she works here, and I've been here for 13 years, so hopefully uh, it's a little easier with us than some people that you don't know or haven't seen before. We just want us out of this room. 
After the upstairs investigation, these pros took a bit of a comic break. This is a paranormal truth first. Two dum dums playing with a Ouija board. One that's supposedly by the shows. I'm really just. I'm, I'm going to put a One little hand. downward pressure on it. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Andrew, or somebody, how do you use this board? Are you allowed? Uh, do you move it? Any spirits? That was me, I think. Oh, yeah. Cody, ask if Chris is a true pirate. Hello, spirits. Is Chris a true pirate? <laughs> uh, maybe we need to read the directions again. Let's read them again. All right. Maybe this whole place on the lap. Maybe it's the laps. Let's try the lap. That whole little thing about it should be a boy and a girl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen preferred. Okay. You're the girl on this equation. What? I walk away <laughs> for like two minutes, and you guys are like, it'll work. Sadly, and not surprisingly, it didn't. So Rise Up moved on to the basement, where they all took part in the second investigation of the night. So the last time we were here, we heard some movement upstairs, yeah, a woman's voice. Someone was talking to us here. Hello? Recently we were in the house. Thank you very much for having us back again. Very, very nice to be here. The last time we were in this basement, there was a woman who was kind enough to reach out to us and talk to us, so we've come to say hello and to ask if you'd be so kind to do so again. I know that in this particular house you probably get a lot of questions from a lot of people all the time. But like the first time we were here, we're not so much interested in all the horrors and the terrible came down here. I didn't I don't know anything about this basement. Like I came in here for whatever reason, I don't know, just attracted to it kind of. But then like I, I had to like run out because it was like really Jesus. Is it because you feel something there or is it just like a confined space and it's just sort of Well no, because it's it has like this open this opening. Like if I went in there and it was like a door that closed behind me, I would probably die. But I feel like I'm being like like my chest is being crushed. Like I mean, someone is standing on my chest. Like that's what it feels like. A lot of times that I've been with you, you kind of, that's sort of a thing with you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The last time we were here, oh, we brought this little guy mm -hmm. in here. And it seemed that whoever you are here showed an interest in him. So we thought as a gesture to you, we'd bring him back again. So at any point, I mean, feel free. If you're curious at all about him, come over, you know, pet him, touch him, whatever the case may be. Somebody just say, yeah, Mark audio. Wow, that's on you. I didn't hear it, that's on you. Okay, that's it all sounded it like a dragged out, yeah. Okay, that's all you. Mark your time, please. Ken called an end to the basement session and the group headed upstairs and sat around the living room. These paranormal investigators decided to become detectives for a short period of time, discussing the validity of the stories that led to Lizzie being found not guilty. That's Lizzie was in was. the ironing. She was out there at like yeah. that window. Which I didn't get the Lizzie ironing thing. Well, she was eating pears. Well, then Lizzie went outside and she thought it would... 
to get apples or pears or something. She ate them in the barn. Yeah, yeah. but they never saw any dust moving in the barn. Or pear, maybe that's on the, the other side, yeah. on the other side of that fence. Yeah, it's also like 100 degrees out. Yeah, there was and a the fence. It had, it had it had barbed wire on top of it, which was in the back fence. In the back. And then it was, so I mean, you've got all sorts of gaps in that. What? I also read somewhere about when they did the autopsy, they took the stomach apart there to see the food digestion yeah, yeah. thing. And they said that, uh, what, there was like an hour or two hours in two between. Hours difference between her. Between her and him. So she was already dead by yep. the time he got here. Yeah. So my thought, Lizzie was in the house. She was already dead. She knew the stepmother was dead. Father came home to take a nap. He wasn't supposed to be home. Uncle John was out. The sister was away, and the maid was outside. Sister was Emily. Yeah. So She's not the way Emily. I look at it was like a typical mob hit. Father wasn't supposed to die, but now he's home. Eventually, he's going to find out she's dead upstairs. He's got to go. If you look at the blows to the head and the amount of blows to the head, I mean, you're talking about anger. Like, oh, yeah. you're dead, and I'm just like... I Still continue to beat him. on you. Well, even him. That's usually not a case where somebody gets caught. That's usually a case of anger building up and so a certain amount of premeditation in that. But she held on to that anger then for over an hour? Yeah. You know, so I just want to see for our own benefit at different parts of the house if you can, like, you got to be able to hear the body hit the floor. With that, the group decided to kill Vin. Well, not literally. They reenacted Abby getting killed up in her room. Why Vin? She was about 160 pounds, and so is this guy. Should I, like, careen off the bed and then... <laughs> well, I have, to, I have to hit you first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you need to limber up or anything? You good? Stretch out. Because you're not just acting. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing your own That was just preliminary. Stunts. Capture the momentous occasion. Right? <laughs> okay, so she was aiming, looking this way. Yeah. Turned around, caught the first blow here. Right there. So she saw the assailant. All right. Then he hit her again here, then spun around and put the other 12 in the back of her head. Okay. All figuring right. he straddled like this and hit her that way. All right. So, so if her ahead. feet were back here, there's no way she was six inches from the wall. All right. Okay. All right, so. All right, so I'm gonna walk in from over there. All right, here I come. So what are you doing? You're, you're doing. Something. I'll wait for you. Um, okay. fixing the bed. Fixing the bed. Okay, here I come. Okay. 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 Did you catch that? Do it again? Yeah. Take two. <laughs> All right. Okay. Right here. All right. That was better. What else? Do it. All right. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oh. fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. He's dead. You're hearing that. Wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Well, I was right below you on the first take, and I could hear every word you're saying. The house is shaking, and uh, and the bang. And the second one, I dropped felt it. it. <clears throat> then the second one, I, I moved into the other, into the kitchen. So now, if she was actually ironing, she would have heard where Ken said. Oh, yeah. Well, then I moved to where Ken was sitting, and it's just as loud. I don't know. Like... So how should at, you say at least, she never heard I mean, anything? When I, I was below you, I was thinking, okay, what if I just know mom's up here cleaning up? You hear the talking and the moving and, and, and whatever, but then you hear the bang. And then if I'm at home, my mom's like, I'm just going to check her and say, hey, right. you dropped something? Because then it would have went quiet after that. I don't know. That's weird. Why she didn't just react. After Vin's Oscar-worthy performance, the guys turned in their Cracker Jack toy badges and headed up to the third floor for the last session of the night. So again, I don't know if you're a child. Some people 
I don't know why they report a child, but I guess some people feel a child up here. Maybe you're Bridget. And you have to be at least someone that is familiar with the events that happened here. Can you help me get to know you? Perhaps a name? Perhaps just something to let me know you're here? Do you feel it? I felt it before. No kidding. Just like this board here, I felt it. Are you knocking in this room? Can you knock on the walls? What else do you know how to do? I, I think we've met you. I think we know you're here now. I, I really do. Is there something bigger you could do for us? I, I hate to ask you to do something that you're not willing to do, or maybe you're nervous. But we can't decide if this is you. We, we feel maybe it's cold and it's the heat of the house, or the house is old. Just you reading way too much Edgar Allan Poe. I'm not talking about maps or anything. What was that? That wasn't me. That's Ken. That was Ken. That one. No, that was like... Yeah. That was like right here. Yeah. Yeah, that was creepy. That was that wasn't the same thing <clears throat> we've been hearing. Did you hear that in your own Ken? No. Someone just tapped twice up here. If someone did that, could you do it again? A little noise action upstairs, but that was all. Rise Up called it a night, and the double investigation of the Lizzie Borden house was complete. They wouldn't leave empty-handed on the second night. This one, along with the next two, are from Abby's room. No one was there, and the recorder was running on its own. So she had her own bathroom. So she pretty much disconnected her family from everything. She didn't even eat with them anymore. So she had her own bathroom. So she pretty much disconnected her family from everything. She didn't even eat with them anymore. So she had her own bathroom. So she pretty much disconnected her family from everything. She didn't even eat with them anymore. While Vin was talking, you could hear a woman's voice between his sentences. It's hard to make out what is being said. To the bed. Fix in the bed. Go okay, here I come. This last one is during the reenactment with just Vin and Cody in the room. It's a man saying, what to do? It's on the tail end of Cody talking, and it's in a whispering voice. Creeps me out. The whisper voices always creep me out. Two investigations, one house, eight pieces of evidence. Not bad. Looks like there isn't just a murderous history at the Lizzie Borden house. There appears to be a little something else. 